here's what's happened. At a very young age, your mind's like a switchboard and there's like a wire. And the moment you hear no, you associate that no to a negative feeling in your life. Oh shit, it's over, it's done. And that's a repetition. So every time you hear no, when you ask out a girl, no matter what the case is, you hear no, you tim it down, you shy away and you walk away from the deal. Same thing in life. Like every time you hear no, that's what happens. You're like, oh fuck, it's over. They said no, fuck, next person. When in reality, if I teach my reps repetition that no actually is the beginning of sales and that's where the game actually starts. You know this as a business owner, right? It's like, let me think about, okay, boom, that switch the wire for when no happens. It's like, okay, happy feeling, exciting feeling. This is where my job jumps in. You're listening to the Wake Up Wealthy Podcast, the only podcast that helps you turn pro in mind, body, spirit, and business. It's a terrible time to start. What are you yeah. doing? Can I, I'm going to use really quick. Yeah. Hey, when you shut that door to the garage, make sure it shut. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Brody, do you do video? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, I throw it up on my YouTube, like some chapter. Okay, because I was going to say that would have been funny with it, like when he was getting up in the background, but yeah. What is up, Wake Up Wealthy listeners? It's your host, Brody Kern, and welcome to the podcast where we show you how to kill it in mind, body, spirit, and business. Today we have a guest that I'm very, very excited about, Daniel G. How are you, Daniel? I'm amazing, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So a lot of, a lot of the guys listening to this podcast may not know who you are, so I want to go through a little bit about your background and what you're doing now, and then we'll dig into the real nitty-gritty of it. Dope. Yeah. Um, you guys will probably hear from my accent throughout the podcast that I'm Canadian. So I grew up... Um, Middle, lower class family. I mean, at the age of 13 years old, uh, my parents split up. And I always say, like, when I was 13, I knew I wasn't going to get shit handed to me for the rest of my life. Because everybody goes through, like, the, the aha, like, the light bulb moment in, my, in life. And mine happened at a very young age. Uh, when I was 13, I was at a grocery store with my dad. And my parents split up. Um, and then two weeks after that, I would always go grocery shopping with my dad. I took a candy and I put it on the conveyor belt at a grocery store. It was like an 87 cents wine gums candy. And my dad looked at me and he said, you're not getting that candy today. And dude, I was used to getting whatever I wanted because both my parents were working two jobs and blah, blah, blah. And the moment he said that, I knew like right in my fucking mind, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to, if this guy isn't going to get me an 87 cents candy, I ain't getting the 20 bucks for movies on Fridays. I went right home to my brother. I'm like, Steve, bro. I'm like, we got to fend for ourselves out here. So I said, I'm like, do you remember Kaza Light, the legal disc burning like when we said download dvds yeah yeah, yeah totally I, I actually do remember that yeah so i i was downloading all like i was like the supplier of illegal cds and movies from the age of like 13 to 16 years old we were just straight like downloading discs we were paying like a buck per disc and then selling them for five bucks at elementary and high school and then in high school um at 16 years old i moved into another business and I were actually, the way I got into this was I was walking down in the foyer in uh, high school. I was walking down the staircase. There was a sign saying, like, if you want to make 100 to $500 on the weekend, sign up here. And I'm watching all these freaking kids, like, walk by the sign. It's the first time, actually, I've ever got a glimpse of cynical people at a very young age. I mean, I'm like, yo, all these people are, like, working at McDonald's. There's a sign out there saying you can make 100 to 500 bucks a day. Why the fuck are you walking by it? I'm like, I'm signing up. My friends are going to lunch. I take the pen. I go sign up. And it's an aeration service company, meaning you're, you're poking holes in people's grass in order for it to breathe. It's like aeration. So I was doing that over the weekends. And on the weekends, I was probably stashing away like five, 500 to 1,000 bucks underneath my bed every single weekend. Wait, and so were you, do, were you doing the aeration or were you selling? I was doing the aeration. First of oh. all, I didn't know I was in sales at the time because I'm just like, yo, I'm doing a labor job. I was knocking on doors, selling aeration services, and then aerating them for five hours after. Oh, you're and doing sales and fulfillment. Sales and the aeration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I didn't see it as sales. I just seen it as work, right? I just seen it as right. work. At the, oh, well, I mean, you're 16. Yeah, I'm 16, but, like, everybody working around me was, like, 30, 35. And I'm, like, this young kid just, like, hustling, like, 18 hours for this company on the weekends twice. So fr Saturdays and Sundays I was working. And then I realized, I'm, like, shit, there's a flaw. I'm, like, if I'm making... I already knew this at a very young age. If I'm making a thousand bucks on Saturday and Sundays and my parents are making that in a whole freaking week, what's the point of going to freaking university? I'm like, there's a, there's a, there's a flaw here. Like if I was just working Monday to Friday, 
I'd be making probably like two, three, four grand by the age of 16. So I did that and I actually started dropping out of like high school for a bit and I started going to air raid lawns and I was making like four or 5,000 bucks um, during like, well, my friends were in high school. I was a freaking plug. Like I was like, buying everybody the freaking weed, the freaking liquor. I was the guy with all the money like, in high school. I had thousands of bucks saved up. And then somehow, some way I got convinced that and at a very young age, like I get it. Education is like the equalizer of everything, but I only care about like my financial burden at a very young age. Like I wanted to be rich at a very freaking young age. I wanted to be wealthy at a very freaking young age, and I realized that. Somehow, well, when you have the, when you when you have the contrast, like so. Okay, so like for me, for example, my parents were seventeen when they had me, and so I always had. I, I saw my parents struggle. Like I had such a bad relationship with money, bro. Right. Like uh, until now, really, where I was the same way, dude. Like it was all all I cared about. Right, right, right. So what happened was I got, because my older brother was like more of a tech guy, engineer guy. So he went into university. So everybody's like, you know, follow the footsteps. So I got, I got convinced I got into university. And then when I was in university, there was so much anxiety buildup because I'm looking around. I'm like, dude, I'm making more than my, I was making more than my prof a year ago. Like what the hell was happening? Third semester international economics class. I'm sitting down um, beside my ex-girlfriend at the time. The prof stands up and, um, it's a very well-known university in Kenya. He stands up. He's like, for anybody here that thinks they're going to make six figures coming out of this program, like the moment they come out of the program, you're in the freaking wrong spot. He, and I'm like, wait, wait, if this guy's telling me I can't make six figures after four years of studying and I was well on my way by the age of 22, 23 to make six figures. If I just kept up the same habits and the same discipline, this guy's smoking something. I'm out. I looked at my girlfriend at the time. I said, babe, I'm dropping out. This is the last time you're ever going to see me. I'm bouncing. So if you want to make love, let's do it in the lecture hall. Cause I'm bouncing. I'm never, I'm never coming back to school. Like, this is nuts. So I went home, back to my tech brother, and I'm like, Steve, I'm like, bro, I just dropped out of university. Don't tell mom, don't tell dad. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but all I know is I don't want to be in that freaking thing because, like, this guy's like, I can't make six figures. I go, I go to apply. I'm like, you know what? Let me go back to my curiosities. And I'm like, I think I could be good at the sales thing because I didn't know I was doing sales, but everybody's like, yo, you're a good communicator. You're good at sales. Blah, blah, blah. And by the way, for anybody that's listening to this podcast, if you're lost in life right now and you're th like, you're like, man, what do I do? I want to start a new gig. Go back to what you're curious in because curiosities typically propel you towards the future. Like when you're curious about something, you start trying to hunt for the answers. So if you're like, maybe I could be good at this real estate thing, or maybe I could be good at this insurance thing, or maybe I could be good at this makeup thing. You start hunting for the answers when you're curious about something. It'll always propel you towards the future. Go back to what you're curious in. Go back to your raw materials. I went back to my curiosities. I actually... I tried studying for real estate. I couldn't sit in my chair for like, I tried to do all the exams. I couldn't sit in my chair for like literally more than an hour. I needed to get up there and go like sell something. So I got a telephone sales job. I leveraged that job when I was 19 um, to get into medical device sales. So that's where I really started my career. I was the youngest medical device sales reps to ever be hired. I was 20 years old working on the road um, with my own car, own co uh, corporate credit card. They gave me a company vehicle and I was going hospital to hospital as their account executive in Ontario selling medical device equipment. So I sold just under $20 million worth of equipment in under uh, three and a half years. And then I branched off to open up my own online sales university in 2017 with one of my mentors. And that's where it all started from there. So I started online sales training, speaking and coaching. That's where we Yeah. Are okay. So let's, let's dial it back for a minute. I mean, because you're like, you go from this kid, right? Like the kid, the candy situation. Yeah. Right? Eight 87th century worried, worried about your parents. Then you're, by the way, slinging CDs that you burned. Such a great idea. I don't know why I didn't do that. I was having skateboard stickers wholesale, mailed into me wholesale, and then I was selling them at school. And I actually, they, they made me stop doing that in sixth grade. They were like, you can't, you can't do this anymore. Because I was like 12 years old. I just had cash. Like, I mean, hundreds at school in right, one right, right. In ones and shit like it was so ridiculous um so that was a great idea there and then so right then you then you roll in you're making all this money doing aeration i mean like to say you didn't even realize you were doing sales like at least the other 35 year olds I, i'm taking a guess here they weren't making three four five grand a week no bro i was chairing we called it chairing like bonusing at the end of the night so we come back into the warehouse, like everybody was like sweaty and like the, the top five guys would get bonuses every weekend. I was bonusing every weekend and everybody be looking.
I even had this like name. I was called Mini Blood. That was my nickname for three years. I don't know why, why that was my name, but I was called Mini Blood. Okay? I was a small kid. I was 16 years old. Anyways, but no, I was like the top producer in Canada for three years straight on the weekends. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you go, go to college, have the whole college experience. Fuck this, right? Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. and then you go and sell 20 million in medical device sales. Like how, like, how does that, how does that happen? You know, it yeah, seemed- so what I went through quick in that phase. So in medical device sales, I was also selling high ticket on the side as well. So that was a lot of corporate solutions. So I was selling for a couple of my mentors. Like when I got home after medical, I was also selling high ticket, which I probably didn't even include into that stat of 20 million. Like I probably even sold more because I was working from six to 11 o'clock at night on the phone, taking high ticket deals, like selling coaching packages, mastermind tickets, big, big coaching packages, like over 20,000 bucks. So the moment I got into sales, um, in telephone sales, I'm like, okay, you know, I could be good at this. I had a freaking wicked VP. He trained me. It was like the Wolf of Wall Street type of thing. And I got into um, being an account executive for a medical company. Here was the problem. I, had, I never had a medical background, never had a medical degree. All these guys, by the way, like if you guys want to know, like anybody that's in the medical device field, it is the most complex sales environment in planet Earth. You have like, think of like a real estate deal or an insurance deal or whatever the case is. You have like two decision makers. When you're working in a hospital, trying to sell something in a hospital, you have about like 15 to 20 decision makers going up from like engineering level to CEO level, to clinical managers, to PhDs, to doctors, everybody, like most highly educated people. So I literally get tossed into the job and this is how it happened. I worked inside sales for them for like six months. And then they're like, we just had, we just fired somebody in the Ontario territory. Can you manage the territory? And this was like a dream fucking come true. Cause I'm like, Oh geez. Like, yeah, for sure. So I get tossed into it, but I don't know nothing about like, I don't know nothing about like, you know, the human body, the medical equipment or anything like this. So like the only thing I can get good at right now is sales. Like it's the only thing I can invest my time into is just like become super good at the product and become super good at sales. I invested my first year over $120,000 on masterminds, speaking engagements and coaches. My first year, I, went to every sales event. I got every single sales mentor, you name them. I had them. I had Tom Hopkins, Brian Tracy, um, Grant Cardone's platforms, everybody in person coaching, um, every event that they held, every summit that they held. I just immersed myself 320 sales books in four years. Like I read the, I, I have probably taken the most sales training in anybody in sales, like in planner, every, anybody in planner went through every sales book every freaking sales trainer, which probably actually affected me in some way, but I, cause like you're, you're getting different opinions from different people and it kind of yeah, like, totally. Totally. But, so let's talk, let's talk about that. Cause that, that's like, that's like a big I issue for a lot of young guys. And I mean, for me, like I had that problem whenever I first started, let's say I probably got like a hundred books in. Right. And I was like, okay, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to listen to at this point. Like this guy's saying this, this guy's saying that. And I mean, for me, ultimately, what's that Bruce Lee quote where he's like, uh, you know, accept what is, what is useful, disregard what is not, like add what is uniquely your own. Like that's the approach I had to start taking. But that's a confusing point for a lot of young entrepreneurs. Like how do you deal with that, especially in sales? Right. So <clears throat> what I did after was I started – so for the first year, I when I say like I just took imperfect action, like I just – took everybody's book. I was taking everybody's courses. I didn't care. And then after what I started realizing, um, what stuck with me, like I, I started saying, okay, what, what am I making the biggest return on investment on? Like what trainer is it? What language am I using? Who is it? And then I just, I tripled down on that one guy for my last two years in medical sales. Like I tripled down on one guy, but the guy Who was, was the guy was not, I was just about to say, he wasn't like some famous sales trainer, like Brian Tracy or Tom Hawkins he was in the field in medical device sales and he was like this hidden gem and nobody was on him. And yeah. his name was Mace Horoff out of Florida. And the guy was an absolute genius in B2B sales. And I just tripled down on all his coaching, all his like all his training programs, all CDs and all his books. Um, and then I just tripled down on one mentor because I wanted the results that he had in medical device sales. So when you're looking to me, when you're looking for a mentor, I'm looking, Hey, do they just have the results that I want? Do I vibe out with this person? Can the person, by the way, as a mentor, that when you're hiring them, can they do a few things? Like, does the, does the person that you're hiring for coaching actually care about you? Can they show you tough fucking love when you need it? But are they actually there to support you in every aspect? And do they have the results that you want? That's it. Tough love, can they support you? Are they there with you? Do they care about you? And do they have the results that you want? And that's in every aspect of my life. Like, when I even have mentors in fitness, 
Like, I know I have one of the top mentors in fitness because I know every other mentor has not pulled all the weight that this guy has. I was speaking in New York about a week ago. The guy flew in from Bulgaria. The guy flew in from Bulgaria to just come watch me speak, support me, and like train new plans with me. Like, no other fitness coach does that. He didn't have to do that, but he actually cared for me and he actually supported me. So, there's a lot of people like mentor selling programs out there for a thousand bucks that don't give a shit about you. They toss Dude. you a program and you're out there in the, like, the waters by yourself. What's nice is like, it's sickening to watch, like we, the waters just got so polluted, but now, now that people, people know if you give a shit or not, like people yep. know, dude, a hundred percent, they can see it. They can sit through the bullshit. I mean, so if you're listening to this, you've got an offer, like, dude, you'll get called out quick. Yep. And, it, and it, you know what's funny? It's, it's only a matter of time. Like I tell coaches this 24 seven because I'm in space. I'm like, dude. I'm like, sure, you'll probably make like 100 grand your first 90 days. I'm like, you'll get exposed though. I'm like, I guarantee you after the first 90 days, you got humans coming out of your program that either aren't making money, that you didn't attest to the things you were going to say you were going to do in your coaching programs and everything like this. What do you think? Just as you get a good referral, you're going to get a fucking bad referral and a bad testimonial as well. Or just as you get a good testimony, you're going to get a bad one as well. And you can't delete shit on the internet. Like it's all on there, right? No, so they, people get exposed really quickly. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, if you can't deliver, like, I mean, because it's one thing to be able to sell the program, but like the thing about our space, if you can't deliver, you're fucked for anything past 90 days. Yep. Yep. Agree with you. Interesting. Okay. So, you, you know, you're studying sales like crazy. You were already naturally talent, like, you know, seemed to be naturally talented, studied harder than anyone, right? Crushed the medical sales game, but you're doing high ticket sales on the side. Yeah. Concern, right. Yeah. When did you make the transition? So I, so that was honestly just to make extra income. Cause I had a, um, like a mindset coach that sold all these packages. So I'm like, yep, let me sell your packages as well. Cause she had like these high ticket programs of over like 3000 bucks. So mm -hmm. I started selling her packages. And what I realized is that I was leveraging my time selling from home and I could do other things. So while I was there, I was still at home. Like I was working on other stuff. I was doing like I, I wanted essentially what I wanted to do because I realized so here was the tipping point if you're asking tipping right. point was I went to go grab my awards in San Diego um, like your, your, your sales award every year like you grab a sales award so I'm going up there and everybody's grabbing their sales award and you get five minutes on stage and you're like oh you know thank you blah 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 it's like kind of like a Grammy right I'm sitting down in the chair and then I go watch the sales trainer on stage that they hired, that my company hired. We have like 3,000 people around the world and we're watching the sales trainer on stage, a motivational sales trainer speaker guy. I can't remember what his name is. He's blowing up the stage, like he's lighting it up. And I'm sitting in my chair after a wicked freaking year making over like 300,000 bucks. I'm like right. 22, 23 at the time, right? Yeah. And like, dude, I'm killing it, bro. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm good. I bought two cars. That's all the money in the world, like at that age. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, my friends are still in university at the time. Like, you know, yeah. like, they, yeah. like I'm in that, a freaking that, that, world. Like taking dude, that feeling's nuts. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm sitting down, I'm watching the guy on stage and, and I'm looking at everybody like, like around me. I'm like, I don't want to be like these fucking people, like 60 years old, making like, you know, whatever, even if it's half a million, a million dollars a year in sales, like they're happy, they get their work from. I'm like, I want to be like that guy. Like that guy's a freaking rock star. That guy's the guy that's lighting up the stage. That guy's the guy that's like, you know, training everybody. And like every, like, that's the guy I want to be like. So I went up for him right after he was done his talk. I went up to him. I'm like, bro, listen, I'm already the best in my company. I'm 23 fucking years old. I'm like, I want to do what you do. I'm going to do it in two years. I'm like, what the heck is it? How did you get into this? How did you start? How did you start the sales training space? And I was always interested in sales training because I was already starting to train like these young guns that were coming up that wanted to get into sales, like on the side for free. So like mm -hmm. inside sales reps, phone sales reps, I already started doing it through like Zoom calls and stuff. So I already wanted to start this. And I, I'm like, how much you get paid for something like this? And he's like, oh, I got 25,000 bucks for an hour. I'm like, what? You got 25,000 bucks to do that for like 45 minutes? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, and then what else do you do? He's like, well, I launch books. I have course and everything like this. So it, it caught my attention because I'm like, okay, this guy's traveling, doing like three, four talks a week. He's probably making a hundred grand a week in speaking because he was, he was training on like two, three stages a week had books, best-selling books. I went back home. I'm like, okay, let me just start recording like a course. I just started recording, recording my sales university. And at that time I started building momentum. I, I recorded the whole platform. And the moment I got four to five sales, I launched it in 2017. The moment I got four to five sales um, in my program, I'm just like, this is going to work out. 
I just left my job. And if anything freaking happened, I would just go back. Like everybody was obviously scared. I was supposed to be the kid to, you know, make a living out of myself. So when I'm like, so when I got into medical sales, everybody's like, Dan, oh my God, he's good. They were like, shit, my grandparents are happy. Parents are happy. I was like the dropout university person. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this entrepreneurship gig. So people are like, what the fuck? What are you doing? You had like the, right. the dream freaking job, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I want to assume where you can't make everybody happy in life because, you know, it's funny the way, you know, it's funny the way it works. I, I, when I left, so fast forward, I dropped out of my job. You know, I started doing well in my sales right. university. And I just said this on a live stream like a week ago. I said, you can never fucking please everybody in life. So stop trying to waste, like stop trying to prove your business model to your family and your friends and stuff. You just got to understand if they're supporting you or not. Cause you're half the time, never going to understand what the fuck you want to do. Especially if you're thinking huge, you think your parents are going to understand your huge vision. Your huge No, that's it right there. Like what I, I, I always say, like you can't outsource the vision, right? Like you have to do that. You cannot expect anyone else to see it. Right. And, and if you're whole, like if you're how you need to be internally, it doesn't matter if you've got the support or not. Like if you just do, if you do the internal work, you're going to know and you're going to make the right decision and you're going to fucking keep going. But if you're yep. looking for external support and motivation and all that shit, just pause and go do the internal stuff till you're ready because you're not ready now. hundred percent agree. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I like that. And what I say is, I say, I said on my live stream, I said, here's the deal. Instead of trying to get validation and admiration from everybody around you, because it's half the time not going to fucking happen. And you're going to deal with a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety because you're going to be sitting down and being like, yo, why doesn't like my best friend support my idea? All you got to do is make one phone call. I said on the stream, I said, make one phone call and just ask them one thing. Hey bro, do you like me? Mom, do you love me? Parents, do you love me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I know you know, I know you don't know what the fuck I do. I know it's really freaking confusing, but I want to know one thing. Are you going to support me? Are you going to be my cheerleader? Or are you on like wh whatever it is that I do? Are you always going to support me? Yes or no? Perfect. Peace. Good. I'm good. I know you're supporting me. If not, bro, I'm never going to tell you about my business. You could just watch from the sidelines. You could be the naysayer from the sidelines. I just need to know, dude, our, whatever it is that I'm going to do, you're just going to cheerlead me. Even at the, like, I, you don't need to know what the fuck I'm doing, man. That's good. Make the phone call. That's it. But at the end of the day, like, I still don't need it. I'm just categorizing you. Like, I, I don't need, I'm not seeking, I know you're not going to understand my business. Like, I know my mom is going to understand my sales agency model. You're just looking at this point, what you should waste, like, spend time talking about with these people. Right. Yeah. Right. But so many people get, like, do you know how many people create anxiety in themselves because they feel like everybody around them has to give them some sort of, like, admiration and have their whole process, like, they have to know what the hell, like, Brody's up to. Like, bro, they're not going to understand, like, you're speaking, you're coaching. Half the people in your space are like, yo, what do you do? Like, what's this personal development thing? Right, dude. Like, I, I, to, I, everyone listening, I will tell you, like, from personal experience, Daniel will say the same thing. Like, we are two 25-year-old entrepreneurs who have been in the game for a long time for our age experience the shit i cannot tell you how just frustrated like self-destructing overheating anger i've had trying to get my parents to understand what i do yeah, the hardest thing man i'm with you on it right like it, it, it i've been like are you guys fucking brain dead or what and you know i i love them to death but like god damn it stresses me out and i had i had to let that go i had to separate that because because there's such a part of your life growing up right and you know, you want, you always like, you know, depending on your relationship, like wanted this approval, whatever, make them proud, dude. And you just can't fucking do it until like you're paying their mortgage and shit. So, yeah. And you know what? It's sad that half the time you just brought up something, you know, it's sad half the time. Like I, I man, I even have my grandmother till today. Okay. I have an old Italian, like, you know, family, Sicilian family. So they're very really, like old school. And like, even now, like I went back to my, like to my home for like Christmas, she came up to me and she literally said, Hey, when are you going to become a lawyer? And I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm so deep into my business. Like, like Brody, I cannot imagine me going back to school. Like imagine me going back to school for like nine years. And that's, she literally thinks too. She's like, I can't wait till you become like, you know, a highly educated lawyer or maybe even a dentist. And like, <laughs> you're like, Yo, Dan's probably looking at like my Nintendo with three different heads right now. Like, what the heck's happening? But oh I just look at him like, hey. I'm like, it, it's the same thing in sales. Like, the way you get an objection and somebody says like no to you, it's, it's simply because they just don't understand. They, they just don't understand. Or in sales, it's either you haven't showed somebody enough value or they don't understand. I'm not willing to show them value because I got clients I got to fucking show value to that are actually going to buy my freaking program. 
Like, you know what I mean? So like, I'm just like, Hey, I get, you know, what? I feel bad for you. I know you don't understand. I'm just going to leave you right there. Cause like, I don't want to explain my business model for you for like eight hours. You still don't understand. And you're not exchanging any some sort of like money in for that. So I'm good, dude. You just stay right. Like my aunt, she's like, yeah, what do you, so like, tell me a bit about your courses. Like, what do you do and stuff? Like, tell me in depth about like everything you do. And I know they're trying to feel me out. I'm at like, you know, a dinner and stuff like this. Right. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, buy, the, buy my freaking program. I was like, I was like two years ago. I'm like, buy my freaking university. I'm like, then you can come in if you actually want to fucking know. Here's the deal. One, they're never, they're ne like 99% of the time, they're never going to freaking understand. And they just grew up in a different day and age. Stop wasting your freaking time to explain to them your whole business model or seek validation from your friends. I like the way Ty puts this down one day. He said, just categorize people into 33, 33, 33. So he said, 33% of the people are in your life, hang out with people that are more successful than you. And um, so those people you're seeking advice from and blah, blah, 33% of people, you categorize them. 33% of people are the people that are on your level. 33% of people are the people below you. And that's the way I literally categorize my life. I'm always like that. I'm like, who is here, who is here, and who is here? And how do I increase that top component of that top 33%? But yeah, that's it. That's interesting. You know, you've been talking about this categorization of individuals and I, you know, it has me thinking about really how I choose, choose my circle around me. And dude, I'm so fucking picky. Like it, it's, it's, it's brutal because I mean like, and I'm not and at the point now with the networks that we have and the people that we've met, like I'm not impressed. I'm never impressed by like, how much money you've made or like what you're going on. If you're rolling up acting like, like, you know, like if you vibe at like good dude, who's also hung, like to be around me, you got to be a good dude. You got to be honest as fuck. You got to all be ambitious as fuck. Right. Super real. No, don't act like someone you're not in front of a certain type of, like it's hard to find the kind of person I want to be around. Right. Yep. But, there's so many people trying to do this thing now that, I mean, I either just categorize people in or out. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But the, the heart, here's the hard case is because here's the way I see it. As you grow older, cause when you're young, you're, you're not, you're not really categorizing people. You're like, Oh bro, we, you know, we, we drank at the bar together and now you're my friend and you're not really having like deep level conversations or anything like this. So like everybody's your friend and then you start filtering them out. The problem is, is you have guys that are like your day ones that you still have like the funny jokes with, but they're not going to understand your business. So I don't like completely cut them out because they're not like in my business, like supporting me to the fullest, but I just know where they stand in the time and energy and focus that I'm actually giving them. Like I'm not talking to them every single day. Like I used to. Be. Yeah. That's you know a good, I mean? that's I'm a good going point. Back to my home city and maybe we're going to go grab some dinner once every couple months and just catch up like, yo, how's work? How's my work? I'm not completely cutting them off. Like you're out of sort of my friends are going, I'm sure you do the exact same thing. It's she, you just give them, you don't give them as much time and energy. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, like I do, like I have boys from college and shit and buddies from high school. Like I got married this year. They were at my wedding, you know, and like yeah. we, we chop it up, shoot the shit, but they're like they're finance guys and have random shitty jobs or whatever. Like we don't talk about anything like that, but you know, yeah. we, we talk maybe twice a year. Like to me, that's basically out, right? Like if you want to call me and have like, more than once every six months and have me answer like you got to be like you got to fit those criteria i said i think you know but or like in it doesn't matter to me if you're in like chapter one or chapter 15 right like if i think you've got it and like you're the kind of person that i want to be around like i'll i don't care where you're at i'll help you develop that right because right. you're the kind of person i fuck with right 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 okay so let's uh dude okay so let's get back on the timeline a little bit so you are right you leave medical sales, you start getting into the coaching, you're doing very well, your aunt wants you to become a lawyer, and uh, you know, what happens, like, when, how old are you now when you first start to do really well in your own entrepreneurship? In entrepreneurship, 23 and a half. And my mentor always says you're young when you use halves in your age. <laughs> um, but yeah, 20, probably like, yes, yeah, some 23 years old. Okay. So what, what has the last 18 months garnished for you? Like, what have you been working on since then? Yeah, man. You know what? I'm, I'm like, as much as people see, you know, Oh, Dan has built up like these companies and blah, 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 man, it's been fucking difficult. And I just thought about this in the last like three weeks, I went through lawsuits. I, I man, in 2017, I brought in 720 students into my university through no Facebook, ads, 
Facebook ads weren't popping. I was utilizing the shit of it in November. Like that came in a very, like, I, like I'm like, holy shit. It came within four months. That's how quick 720 students came in four months. Right. Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, lawsuit, November, 2017. Why? I called it a freaking university in Canada. You can't call yourself a university unless you're accredited or you have like credits and you have something like it's, it's actually legalized. Like I just called the university. I'm like, Oh cool. University grant card on you, you know, card on you, right. Like all the red sales university relevancy, enthusiasm, discipline actually it's called red sales university. I got a lawsuit. I paid every single penny back that all, all the people who joined my university, I paid every single uh, profit back to them. I had a hundred thousand dollar fine. So that was like my first hit. I'm like, Holy shit. Um, then after I got into like some horrible partnerships and I still managed to keep myself going, still managed to maneuver. Um, and every time I'm on like a podcast or something like, do, do you regret calling it a university? Do you regret getting spark um, into this like partnership? Cause I got in two horrible partnerships last year as well. And I'm with phenomenal gentlemen right now. You know them as well. I'm working with them right now. Um, but I said no, because I would never be in the partnerships I am right now. I would probably never found them. I would probably have been doing something else. It allows me, like the way I see it is every time I've taken action and it fucked up, I was glad I took the imperfect action because listen, in life, you can never take some sort of like perfect fucking action. Everybody's waiting for the perfect time to do their business. Like I'm glad I got the lawsuit and I already fucking started. There's no way in hell you're ever going to take perfect freaking action. Like if I just, I just came back into my house right now, I went from the airport to my house. If I'm like, I want to drive straight, straight down to my house. I'm going to drive one straight, perfect freaking line. I'll crash into a freaking pole. Like there's going to be bends in the road. There's going to be turns. There's going to be roundabouts and I'm going to course correct. Dude. And to right. stay, to stay sane through that type of thing. It's literally just a reframe of mind. Like, dude, like all you gotta do is be like, man, I'm fucking grateful. I can pay that hundred grand to whoever I paid right. it to. Right. Plus, right. Right? That could have gone so much worse. Like I'm good. Yeah. Or I have the ability the ability, like, actually, to be honest with you, I was fucking, at that point, the moment I walked out of that courtroom, and I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, yo, take it, I'm 23 years old. And I just got a, I like, I went through this whole freaking wicked ass career. I launched a business. I'm like, okay. And then boom, I just get crushed. And I was like bragging to my family, yo, I'm going to be the shit. I'm going to make like hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, yo, you guys better watch out. And now I'm like, holy shit. I went on Google and I'm like, let me go back to a sale. I literally typed it in Google. The moment I walked out, I was in a taxi and I put in sales job on like indeed.ca. It's a job thing. Yeah. I'm like, yo, this is in your tap out point of an entrepreneur. Is it really? Like, I'm like, you have the ability to like, everybody has a threshold in entrepreneurship. It's like when you tap out, I'm like, is this your fucking threshold? Like it's right here after one lawsuit and you're done. Like actually for the people that are watching this monitor what your threshold is. Is it like after two bad comments and you're done? Like, are you finished after somebody says you suck as an entrepreneur? Is it after a lawsuit? Is that when you tap out? Is it after somebody puts like a fucking gun to your head and you're like, yo, you owe me 50,000 bucks? Is it after one bad addiction? I used to have gambling freaking addictions. Like, when do you tap out? When are you done? And that's, such a, dude, that's such an interesting topic. Like, thank you for bringing that up. Because, dude, I, I've wondered, like, and I've said, like, I don't know if I have one. I feel like I've been through the, as bad as it can get. Like, dude, I, I like, you know, so was sober for a year, started making money in real estate, put a bunch of money in the bank, right? Said, oh, I, I won't fuck this up. I've got something to lose, drank again. And dude, like two months later, I, I literally almost cut my arm off in Vegas, had blown all my money, was almost losing the house I just bought, was almost losing my, you know, the girl, who I'm, the woman who I'm now married to and have a child with like, Dude, it was all so fucked up. I've put six figures in the bank, lost it all, been like, what the fuck do I do? And just, I still haven't seen any other option than figure out a way to go hustle some money myself, you know? Right. Find the threshold, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when, when is it that you tap out? Also, it's important, like, I'm sure your viewers understand that, like, a huge skill that you have, Brody, and, like, just because I talked to you, like, it is, it, like, you have the ability to drum up business and keep going. Like, you have a sales skill where you're, like, no matter fucking what, I'm leaning back on who the heck I am and my, my number one communication skill. Like, you use it for everything, to open up your network center. So, I do think it's, like, huge. Like, I talked to, like, okay, first of all, like, I'm a sales trainer. So, like, every time I open up my talk, I'm, like, yo, who here, like, you know, believes in, like, sales is, like, the number one thing for your business. And I'm not trying to say that just as a sales trainer. I'm just, like, it is the number one thing of your business. Like it is a front end before back end. If you don't have customers, you have fucking, you can't hire your assistant or your operations person or you, or you can't develop programs. What's the point? And like, I'm looking at people and like half of them don't put up their hand and I'm like, fuck, there's a problem. Like, this is like the number one, like 
what happens when you tap out, you go produce more customers. You look around you, there's no customers. You go out there and you go produce more customers for your business. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fun. Like, what do you, what do you do? And it, you know, it is nice. Like, so like I've wondered what I would do in, you know, situations that I have been through if I was a back end guy. Right. Right. Because I'm not, we're front end guys. Right. 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 And we have, we have back end guys who support us, but like, what do those guys do if they fuck up? Right. 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 I, I don't know. Do you? Uh, no, they th typically what happens is either they're maniacs, which I fucking love, and they just keep going and they keep developing new programs. And they're like, let me try it again. And they form like the smartest ones have business mentalities where they form partnerships with guys like you and I, right? The other ones just tend to go back. Like I see it every, like either they form a partnership they and they, they tap out and they just go work for like a tech company or whatever the case is. And it's fine because not everybody. Like, that's just a signal of their, it's not everybody is meant to be the fucking like a type player and entrepreneur. I know. Yeah, a bunch it, of friends it's, that just so, it's just so sexy right now, which I fucking like, hate to be honest. Like I, I've been on some serious rants lately on Instagram about the, the state of, you know, the, the viewpoint of entrepreneurship. Like it, it's not, everybody has the chops for this shit, dude. Like I fucking a couple times a year cry to my wife, like, Babe, what the fuck am I doing? You know, and yeah. things are good. You know, good. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. It, it's it's crazy. Like social media really does put on a facade, especially like even younger people coming in because if they made like fifty thousand bucks in like their drop shipping course, and now they're taking a picture on a private plane, and now people are like, wait, I just want to do this. So like the fast track, it's like I want to do this within six months, and it's like holy shit, like yeah. wow, like. So let's, talk, yeah. let's talk about the, the difference between, okay, so like right now to, let, let me get your opinion on this. I have a serious problem with like personal brands, right? Like it, it is all so, it's hot to build a personal brand. Building a personal brand doesn't mean shit. Instagram as a whole is super unqualified. Like personal brand does not correlate to income, right? Mm -hmm. If you only have a personal brand, but for those guys who have built skill sets, and businesses before and then built a personal brand and have a vehicle to monetize then it translates to income but you've got guys coming out right now just building i want to build my personal brand right what the fuck does that mean kid yeah. like, like, I that, you brought this up you know i know why i came back into my home city and i know three big people that are like like doing things here well actually sorry let me rephrase that three big people on social media right on social media so I'm like, you know, I want to connect with him. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? I haven't been back for six months. You know, let's connect. And I went out for dinner with some folks last night. And one girl was uh, like a huge social media influence, like 1.3 million followers. Dude, the girl couldn't afford the dinner. So no way. Couldn't no afford way. Dinner. Bro, she couldn't afford the dinner. And I'm looking at that. And that's where it came up. And like what we're talking about right now literally came up that like all that content bullshit is an expensive hobby. If you don't have something on the back end and intent of why you're freaking doing it, it just becomes really truly and honestly an expensive hobby towards what, like 1.3 million. Like, dude, if you just knew how to sell a book on the back end, I could make probably just like from our business skills, I can make a hundred thousand bucks a month from her social media if it's done correctly. But she didn't build it with that intent and it's it, it's useless so then a lot of people start doing that and they're like oh i want to i want to become an influencer influencing what like influ what are you doing like first of all you're influencing crap you're not an i don't even like the word influencer like i i hate fucking influencer the word because i don't even know to be honest with you, i don't know even know, know what the fuck people <sighs> think it means um, oh, that's what i was about to say I, I don't even know what the fuck it means yeah like what are you influencing bro like what what are you influencing fucking bikinis like, what are, you, what are you influencing? Your private jet? Like, I don't get what you're influencing. Are you influencing something positive that's making a positive impact? Cool, you're a great influencer, I guess. But the way I see it is that so many people then look, like women start looking at this chick and it's like, oh, she's living the life. Like, good at her. She's on a beach. No, it's a dude that flew her out, took some fucking pictures, and she's back home, and she got paid 200 bucks for that shoot or 500 bucks for that shoot. And now everybody's trying to do it. I'm just putting in that girl's perspective. Um, right. But yeah, it's really, really easy to get the, the shiny object, object, object syndrome. Dude, um, right? it, it, and it's going to yeah, get worse. That, that's what it is. It's shiny object syndrome. Like right now, like, yeah. okay. So like, you know, I see some young guys who they really want to. And because, you know, there is an individual who has done this and seems to have done well. Right. But like guys will want to start a podcast. I'm like, listen, starting a podcast, like 
takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. If you aren't doing anything else, but like trying to get great podcast guests who like, there's a million other podcasts interviewing entrepreneurs. Like it, it doesn't fucking matter, dude. And like, okay. So I always like, there's the quote, I, I have recently shifted my mindset on this, you know, like you, your network is your network, right? To an extent, that's true. Now on the flip side, check this out. I don't think it means that at all. I know plenty of people, right? Mm -hmm. Who I, I know super high net worth individuals who, you know, they're, in, they're in my network. We're cool. We're friends. Right. But like, they're not going to make me any fucking money. Like, your network right. doesn't work if you're not like putting in the shit, like if, if, or if you don't have vehicles, if you don't have skill sets, yep. skills matter, right? Not, Hey, I know fucking we we're good friends with Gerard Adams. So yeah, we're rich. Like that's not how yeah. it works, dude. A hundred percent agree. I like, I a hundred percent agree with you. Yep. Yep. And, and I was just about to say like step one, and obviously you know this before you even think about fucking grabbing your video and making an Instagram video or whatever it is have a skill set and monetize the skill set and that's it have a business have a real business monetize and and look at like I, that's why i opened up the podcast saying like if you don't have that go back to what you're curious and go back to some raw materials and then triple down on one thing and get solely focused on like one thing go all in stop chasing like four here's another thing what happens is because you're in social media and you see one guy doing forex you see one guy doing life coaching you see one guy doing social media building you're this is what happens everybody's like yo let me try this and let me try this and let me try that and then you start trying five different things and then you're just like immersed with all this information and you don't implement on any of them that's why when you're like yo who is your trainer then i got triple down on one fucking trainer i always say my story of like chasing two rabbits i said this story once like at a talk i said you know it's the same thing with anybody and even lions in a jungle. I was sitting down with my grandparents and we were watching the National Geographic channel and you have this lion trying to eat this, um, this wildebeest. There are two, one lion, two wildebeest. And like what, he's ready to attack one of them. There's two wildebeest that he, he, he wants, like he doesn't care which one he's getting. So he's freaking running, he's running, he's running. You got two wildebeest probably like 10 meters ahead of him. They're like, yo, one of us are fucking dead, right? So they're like, the only way to lose a lion is to split. So in like five seconds, wildebeest, one goes right, the other one goes left. The lion wasn't focused on wildebeest right or wildebeest left. He's like, anyone's good. So he paused for two and a half seconds when they split. One Never goes talk. right, one goes left. He paused. He's like, okay, let me go right. He's chasing him, can't keep up because he paused. He's like, yeah. fuck it, let me go left. Keeps chasing him, can't keep up. He doesn't fucking eat. Why? He wasn't focused on one person. So if wildebeest right, on the right hand side, he's like, I want this one. The moment he splits right, I'm gonna fucking go right with him. No matter what happens, I'm just gonna go right and I'm just gonna keep fucking chasing. So I'm not focused with this guy on the left hand side because I know what I want. That's yeah, a that problem. Eat. He eats. Yeah, he then I'm gonna fucking eat. Yeah. Right? Like I'm like when I'm when I'm in Brody's program, I'm not gonna take like fucking Tony Robbins and fifty thousand other fucking people. I'm in one program listening to his. I took the program because I want his results. First of all, like you know what I mean? Why don't I just triple down on it? That's it. Right. Right, dude. Yeah. It, yeah that's, a, that's an interesting story. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like that. Okay. So, um, you know, how much we got, a, we still got a little bit of time left here. You doing okay on time? Yeah. yeah I'm, okay. I'm good. Yeah. Um, so, to, you know, t tell the listeners this, like, what are you, what are you working on now? Yeah. So, um, I was fortunate to get that lawsuit and then like course correct with courses. Um, I, I, I couldn't release a course until I paid back the government a fine. I wasn't allowed to release any courses for six months. So it allowed me to be like, okay, what do I do now? So I took all these trained reps in my field that I trained and mm -hmm. I started, I, I started to understand the coaching space and like the consulting space. And I said, well, a lot of these people are building coaching programs and that's what's popping right now. A lot of people want to yeah. throw coaching programs and everything like this, everybody and anybody, but I'm going to take people that actually have a, a uh, true and honest scalable model where they're already making six to seven figures and they don't want to close up their programs. They don't want to be on the phone with anybody, any emails. And they want that exclusivity. So people then come in and get their access when they pay for their programs. They don't want to be closing their programs. I started training my guys just in a different business model for four weeks on high ticket sales. And I'm like, okay, you guys have been trained in my sales university from A to Z sales, but this is high ticket. This is how you close high ticket deals. And this is a need. And everybody's looking for a wicked ass closer, right? So I started looking at my top guns and I started outsourcing them slowly. And then I started to create my agency model. I'm like, wait, I'm just going to start partnering them up with closers. Now 
And I'm not just going to partner up everybody. I said, okay, if there's somebody that has like a Forex platform and it's 10,000 bucks for Forex mentorship, I want somebody that understands that language. Like I'm not even looking for the sales rep. I'm actually looking for somebody that's understanding. The like if somebody's selling a real estate wholesaling package, like one of my boys has wholesaling, you probably know him. Um, yeah. Joe Dillon, let's say for example. Yep, Joe okay. Dillon. If Joe's selling a wholesale, um, wholesale real estate package, I want somebody that understands that game rather than just a wicked ass sales rep. Because the, like right. all business owners are, can, can sell their platform best because they know their product best. It matters. It, it, it doesn't. And it, first of all, it's not, it's not like I, I can go into this and how product fucking doesn't matter half the time, but they have a lot more conviction because they built up their whole fucking company. So they can talk for hours and hours and hours about their freaking product with confidence and conviction which helps yeah. the hardest thing for a business owner to scale their business is when they pass off their sales. Cause they're like, uh, does this person know as much as I know? Like, that's kind of like, you'll that's feel the it. Part. That's the toughest part, dude. Yeah. You're going to go through it. You're going to be like, yo, and like, and first of all, it's the hardest thing. Like if you're a business owner watching this, scaling out your sales is the hardest thing. Cause you don't want to lose income for like a month for two months. Cause a rep is not going to produce as much as you. And I'm right. saying this, fucking agency owner so i'm not giving you guys bullshit i know he's not going to be as good as you guys no that's the truth he's now he's never going to be and then you also deal with the internal struggle of he, he being down the road but right now like there's no like in the first month or two you've been doing your gig and you've been selling and you created program he's not but the problem is is that your salesperson is your biggest investment is your company it's not like like it's not an expense losing it in the first two months of process it's your investment down the road right. it's the only way you're going to scale out your time or you're going to keep trading time in for money so it's, so what you do is you grab three of them. You take your top two, the top two guys are producing. You put time into them. You train them. They're already trained in sales. You train them in your company. Let me Which, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Can any, can any amount of role playing eliminate that risk? Can any amount of role playing? What do you mean? And when you're hiring them? What do yeah. You mean? Well, okay. So like you said right there, that's your investment, right? Like they need to get in the reps so that they can be good down the road. So for someone who is listening and scaling out their sales force right now, can any amount of role playing and practice help shorten that time period or eliminate the losses there as fake reps? Can that replace the real reps? You see what I'm asking? What do you mean fake reps? Role playing. With oh, other oh, 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 fake reps. I thought you meant fake sales reps. Fake reps. Oh, no. yeah, fake, yeah, yeah, fake reps. Yeah. 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 Oh, for, for, to be, to be honest with me, I think repetition is huge. So I truly do believe that it will cut the curve. I do think repetition is huge. I don't feel like I can instill personality into anybody, but I yeah. do feel like, any, like that's the fucking difficult part. And that's what I'm looking for. Like I can't, I can't retrain another day. That's impossible. Right. But I need to know one thing. Does the person get it? Because everybody has different selling styles. Like, does that person just get the product and then they can role play with, like, I have a lot of guys that aren't freaking extroverts like you and I or whatever the case. Like, I have a lot of guys that aren't high energy salespeople. And, and they like, sell. And they fucking sell because they get the product. They get yeah. it. And all they have to get is this. Okay. Who are his customer? Who's Brody's customer? Okay. What do they want? And what do I have to say in that, like, where are they, what's their current state? What's their desired state? Okay. What's your current situation? What do I have to say that's going to get them to feel like they could trust us? We're going to hold their hand throughout the whole process. Like what's that credibility piece that I have to show throughout my script that they believe that I can get them those results. That's it. That's it. And like, that is different for everybody. Like for me, it's a lot of storytelling. It's, for me, it's a lot of my story, just like you. It's a lot of your freaking story. Somebody else embodies something different. Like a script to me is just a fucking framework. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Me, I, mean, I, I mean, it really is like for me, my entire selling process is my story framework. So it's not, right. there you go. It's, it's just a framework. It's not something you go, you don't marry a script. A script is not going to make somebody 10 million freaking dollars. What's going to make you a lot of money is understanding your ideal customer and what they actually want. And if you can get them results, qualifying them, asking them the right questions and taking them to their desired state. That's it. Yeah. I don't think, but I do think repetition helps. I do think I really, truly, and honestly believe um, anything in life, your subconscious is programmed by repetition. Meaning like you can totally. only get good at things if you repeat it a certain amount of times. And to me, there's repetition in different formats, not just like role playing. There's repetitions in um, reprogramming people, not like a cyborg. You can't really reprogram yourself. You probably learn the wrong shit anyhow. But like what I'm trying to say is like even for a no, sometimes to me, that's where I got to work with a rep and repeat that like, 
teach them what a no is and get them to change. Like, for example, if you're in sales right now, the hardest thing is to get like an objection and say, let me think about it while you're closing like a deal or a pack. Because what happens is when, when you get into sales and like if Brody hires a sales guy, the first thing that happens when you get on phone calls for a month and you start hearing, let me think about it, let me think about it because it's a fucking high ticket offer because he yeah. actually wants to give you guys results and transform your life and your business and your health, there's going to be a high ticket assumption, which is going to be a high price and you're always going to get a freaking no answer in the beginning of the sale. So the way I see it is like, here's what's happened at a very young age, your mind's like a switchboard and there's like a wire and the moment you hear no, you associate that no to a negative feeling in your life. Oh shit, it's over, it's done. And that's a repetition. So every time you hear no, when you ask out a girl, no matter what the case is, you hear no, you tim it down, you shy away and you walk away from the deal. Same thing in life. Like every time you hear no, that's what happens. You're like, oh fuck, it's over. They said no, fuck, next person. When in reality, if I teach my reps repetition that no actually is the beginning of sales and that's where the game actually starts. You know this as a business owner, right? It's like, let me think about, okay, boom, that switch the wire for when no happens, it's like, okay, happy feeling, exciting feeling. This is where my job jumps in. I think, I think that you can totally, I mean, I have reprogrammed myself, uh, you know, based on conditional responses, just like right. that, right? Right. You, you just, you have to, and it comes, it comes down to like self-talk and state control, right? Mm. The, the true, okay, so here we go. This is the fucking bomb that I'm going to drop here. Daniel's dropped a bunch, but the true power that you can have, true power, is the ability to stay calm in any situation. If you can stay calm during the sales process, you're fine, right? It's when emotion comes up that you're fucked, right? If you're calm, that shit will happen, right? Yeah, oh, I'm gonna feed off this. If you're calm in negative states also, like that's one. So when you get calm when somebody throws you a fuck you or a no, and you're just like, yo, and you're still calm, that's exactly what it takes. And you have to remain calm throughout the whole sale. So even when you're closing a deal, because you just won, you don't switch your emotions again. Cause that's the deal still keeps on going until they're in the program and everything like that. And they're done the program. Like there's something called refund, right? And, like, and, and charge back. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I'm getting to is like, even when you collect your 5,000, even when you close your ability to stay calm, cool and collected throughout the whole sale will make it or break it. Like I've seen people, emotions literally go like this, like Brody, they're calm, they're calm, they're calm. They close a $5,000 deal. I'm like, dude, can't wait for you to get, and it's like, oh shit, what did I just buy? Holy yeah. shit. Like, right. I just, like they just, like their, their, their energy levels just like spike through the roof, right? But if you watched how you sell them, you were calm the whole conversation, right? So keep doing it after the sale as well, right? Obviously right. you give them a rant and it's you're like, hey dude, listen, I appreciate you investing in yourself. Not many people do this and you give them some sort of gratitude. This is gonna be great, right, but like, if, if you change your state, also like that showing that there's a difference between like being excited for the person that they're about to change their life and being excited right. because you just made cash. Like it also shows that you're like, it doesn't happen that often, right? So you, you right. don't like you were just you were just acting and we're not being real or authentic with that person in front of you, right? Mm. Never looks good. Mm. Oh, I like that. Yeah, because like, say I'm checking out somebody or you're a salesperson and you're grabbing a credit card and now you start working faster and you're like, okay, let me get the first digit. You start adding some urgency to it. They're going to start pressuring back and they're going to say, well, hey, listen, this guy just changed up a thousand, ten percent once I said yes and here's my credit card. Yeah, and, and here's what I want to add to that too. God, this is good. Whether they're consciously thinking that or not, like the human intuition will tell them that. Right. right. It doesn't matter who it is. They'll feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be like, then what will happen right away? They're going to go back to bad deals where they got screwed on. They're going to have all these beliefs that came into them. Like when's the last time we're getting, like, think of this, you're getting them to sign a contract. What do they think about contracts? They're like, Oh fuck, I don't want to sign another contract for real estate. I, I signed it or for, sorry, I just signed a contract for my home. That means I'm abiding to something for a certain amount of time. Oh, yeah, it's like, like it's like in bold letters. This shit's legally binding. You're fucked. Yeah. You know, like. right. yeah. So, so your ability, I like that you said that your ability to stay calm, cool, and collective and not neutral, like not monotone throughout the sale, but right. just fucking authentic, like just throughout the whole sale, just being you. Um, last week I was speaking at a conference, a kid comes up to me, Brody, and he's like, yo man, everything you just taught me, dude, I can go use it with girls and da da da. He's like, tell me your fucking number one strategy. 
Because I, I, he's like, I can feel like the shit you just taught me in a sales process, I can go pick up women on the street and stuff like this. I'm like, dude, come <laughs> on. And he's like, what's your number one strategy for closing somebody? And I just paused it. I said, dude, just fucking be you. I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm like, you might fake her on a fucking date, but I'm like, you won't fake her into a marriage or you won't fake her on being on another date with you. I'm like, just be you, be who you are. People vibe out with people. Like people do business with people they like, alike or want to be like in life. People do business with their friends. And the way I see it is business in life. People always do business with their friends. All things being equal in life, people do business with their friends. All things unequal in life, people still want to do business with their friends and people they vibe out with and people they fucking like. So at the end of the day, why are you going to show one personality trait over the phone or one personality trait and then switch it up a week after or switch it up two weeks after? They're not going to be a customer with you for the rest of your life or whatever. I'm just like, dude, just be you. Be who you are. The easiest way. And that way, that way, she accepts you for who you are so you don't have to fucking change it a year or, or a month down the road. And it's the same thing in freaking sales. People you know, will call you. Go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, that's just really great advice, just in all areas of life. You know, I've been lucky enough to where, like, I'm just so bad at faking it. Like, <laughs> like if I'm pissed, you're going to know, right? Like, if, I'm, if I'm happy, you're going to, I, I don't have the luxury of being anything other than myself. Like, dude, I remember there was this one time I, I, I was in college and like the university was shooting some content for like some really promotional stuff. And I had just walked out of this test. I, I had been in like, granted, I was like really addicted to drugs and alcohol. I, I had been strung out. I walked out of this test and I was just in a bad mood and they had this camera and I just scowled at it and I couldn't even help it. I like later on, I was thinking about, I was like, fuck, I made a really mean ass face to that camera. They used the footage for like their promotional stuff. So forever, I was seeing this con, like this, this video of me just like, mm, like pissed right. over and over and over. And I was like, dude, I wish I would kill to just be able to look happier to some people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because like on my, like I, I tell people straight up, like the people are like, yo, why don't you post more on your fucking Instagram? I'm like, we love your pictures when you're like smiling. I'm like, bro, half the time I get on a fucking live stream and I'm fucking yelling if I'm fucking pissed. And like, you know what I mean? And like a lot of people like, yo, a lot of people don't vibe out with me. Cause like, I literally just say what the, like, I always just have a conversation with the, the top of my head and I'm not going to lie. Like, bro, in business, 99% of the shit is bullshit. So I call people out on, I call people out 24 seven. I 24 seven. If it's on my mind, I'm going to call them fucking out. I don't give a crap. I don't care if I get negative publicity. I don't care if I fucking lose a relationship. I just say what's on my fucking mind. So to be honest with you, it's actually opened me a lot of business. I used to like being vulnerable and being authentic. I used to actually like, even during talks, bro, like I used to be scared about being vulnerable about my story. I used to, and I didn't touch base on this because this would have been a whole nother conversation podcast. But anyhow, long story short, I lost a lot of money when I was in medical device sales because I, I was addicted to, to gambling. Right. I was you, yeah, right. Like, in a casino from like 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. I was I was a I, I lost six figures. Um, I lost both of my cars. I went homeless for a week. Um, playing blackjack was, or what? Poker. Pardon? What were you uh, playing? Roulette. Roulette. Oh, that was just my game for two and a half oh, years. Oh, yeah. yeah. How'd you even make it that long? Pardon? I said I don't even know how you made it that long. Dude, I was killing it in business. Like I was making like 10, 20,000 bucks a week at like 22. I'm like, I, I just had extra okay. cash. But you were just black. Like there's no way you were ever winning at roulette if you were only playing roulette. Like that's dude, like. I, I would have like, okay, I would, uh, dude, you don't win at the casinos anyhow, but I would have good days, right? So it hooks you like when you win 30,000 bucks, you're like, fuck, I knew I could do this. It's an addiction. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't, don't I get it. It's the I same. Over and I played blackjack. I played it all. I'm saying my main 80% game was roulette. That's where I would spend my time on. But I would go dabble in blackjack. I played poker. Anyhow, so what I'm trying to get to is I had this whole thing that I got over. I had this whole addiction, which is fucking horrible. It's just like a drug addiction. It ruins your life. And I watch family and friends like, get their whole fucking life ruined because of gambling as well. Suicide and everything. So <clears throat> what I was trying to get to was when I started speaking and coaching, I thought because gambling and when I was young, I was looking for people to partner up with and I was looking for people to invest in my companies and things like that. So if I went on a mic and said, yo, I was a fucking addicted gambler. What do you see right there? You're like, yo, that's somebody that's like untrustworthy. If I give him a million bucks, he's probably going to fucking go blow it. Give <laughs> cash. Yeah. Right. Right. It's like, I'm never investing to his fucking program. He's probably going to go to the casino. 
so for the first year, I didn't, I, bro, I didn't open up to nobody. I'm not, like, even on a live stream, I didn't say gambling, like, yo, you couldn't, if you gave me 20,000 bucks to talk about gambling, I would have said absolutely not. Even if it was just on a fucking video on Instagram or a live stream, I would have said absolutely fucking not. There's no way. Until I realized that, like, yo, people more vibe out with you when you're just a human than they know your whole fucking story, right? And I'm just telling you guys, like, sorry, like, I'm just ranting on right now. I'm telling you guys, like, literally my thought process that what happened as an entrepreneur because that was something that I was trying to hold back until I realized the first time one of my coaches said, yo, just fucking say it and then go tell your family, like, nobody knew except for my best friend. Like, no, I was good at fronting because I had money every week to, like, fucking, hey, man, I'm doing well. So the moment I spoke about it, Brody, and obviously you know this because you have a huge ass fucking story. The moment I spoke about it on stage, dude, there was like an 8,000 pound gorilla that laid off my back. More business came, came in than ever, surprisingly. And I thought like people were going to be like, yo, fuck this guy. People were like, holy fuck, dude. Like, yo, I want to work with you. Like this guy has a humanistic story. Like this guy's fucking real. And then I just started telling people my whole fucking story. And I tell everybody my challenges every fucking day in business yep. and all the yep. bullshit that comes along with it. And that's what people like, that's what people want to hear now. See, I, I, you know, I wish that I had almost had that like struggle with vulnerability. I had some struggle with vulnerability around like talking about my struggles in business. But as far as like my story, even when I was in my addiction, dude, I was like brutally on it. Like I, I had buddies who were heroin addicts um, as well. And they, they, uh, they like really hid it from everyone. Even me, like I didn't know how bad they were, you know? And my poor parents, dude, I put them through the ring. Like I've always just been brutally honest. I'd come home, my parents would be like, what's been going on? And I'd be like, I'm smoking crack, dad. Like it's fucked up, you know? It, but like, I was always so honest. And so for me, it, it was the only, it was the only way, you know? And I don't know if it's just like practical thinking or what, like, cause if you are, you know, if you, you can only fake it for so long. I know that, you know what, dude, see, see, and you, there's some things in life. If you don't have, like, I, I noticed that stuff after going, like, I, I just noticed that I was living a, like, not in my professional career, but in my whole life, I noticed that I'm like, dude, I'm just fucking faking it. They only know half of the fucking pie, like, especially my family. Like they only know half of it. And that creates a lot of fucking anxiety. And that goes into brush, depression for a lot of people. So the only, like, it's until I really, I was young, bro. I didn't know how to deal with everything. I didn't know how to like, I, I cleared up my addiction myself. I never even went to rehab. Like I fucking, like, I just went through so much internal fucking self-work instead of training sales. I like fucking, I hire coaches, start reading books. Like I would start going huge on personal development and internal work. And until I realized like this was the last fucking thing and it felt so fucking good. And I got, and I, and I, and I just learned, bro, smart people learn from their own, own mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. I always like being the wise person in life and learning from other people's mistakes. But sometimes you just got to learn off your own fucking mistakes. And it's just part of it. I'm still learning off mistakes. Every time I have yeah. something bad, I'm like, I take a step back and I'm like, what does this mean? Rather than looking at I'm like, yo, what does this mean? How can I learn off this? What did that bad partnership mean? And how don't I do it again? And that's it. Right. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm the same way. Like, I don't even, I mean, for me, dude, I'm so stoic now for as crazy of a life as we live. It's just like shit happens and I'm just even some bad shit can happen. And I'm like, yeah, I'm grateful for that. Cause like, I'm about to grow. You know what I mean? Like, it's just shit is what it is. Life is always going to be true to it. Like life is always going to do life. And I, I like just have to deal with it. You know, and that's how I had, for me, it's comforting to frame things like that. For other people, it stresses them out. But that really what it comes down to is like ego and control. If that stresses you out, then like you're holding on to the steering wheel. For me, I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, whatever. Like, I'm just waking up and going. I don't even, like, I, I, was on, I appeared on a podcast yesterday and they asked me if I, you know, about goal setting and how important it was. And I was like, I don't even think it's that fucking important. I was like, I set goals so I can re reverse engineer my daily task. But really, I just wake up and I go all in for 24 hours. It's how I stay sober one day at a time. You know, I applied that concept to my entire life, right? Mm -hmm. If I need to push myself physically in fitness, it's one foot in front of the other. One more rep, right? I am always in the now. I am never, ever, how, what I'm going to have to do in six months, if I'm going to have the money, I like I love that. This has been great. I, I like two things that you said. One was the gratitude aspect. I really like this conversation because I think we just showed people like to me yesterday, 
I was doing some deals over the phone and I caught myself in the fucking egotistical bullshit mindset where I'm like, fuck, like I wrote a number on the board, bro, last night. I'm like from 6 to 10 p.m., right? Because I was traveling for a bit. I'm like 6 to 10 p.m. I'm going to close like $40,000 worth of business. I don't know how, but I'm just going to fucking do it. Okay, I just wrote it on the board. And then like, I was literally, bro, it was like 9 p.m. And I was at like 32,000 bucks. And I didn't, I didn't hit the goal. And I was literally like this. I'm like, fuck. And I started getting pissed. Like just in my head, I'm like, yo, how did I do it? Like I was like right there. I had another person that I could have brought in and I know it's going to help them. And I'm like, yo, Dan, shut the fuck. Like then I stopped and I'm like, just stop for one second, bro. You just closed $32,000 with the business. Like that progression, like you weren't just like, yo, like what the heck? Like that's the problem. Like nobody ever marks your progression in life. Like nobody ever does it. Number one. Number two, I like the other thing that you said when you're like, fuck the goals. I'm just going all in and being better. One thing better than yesterday. And I made a video on Instagram and I said, it's like the Kaizen principle. Just do a bit more than every fucking single day. Forget 20 years down the road, go all in every single day and just do a fucking bit more. And I said, if you could just be 0.28% better than you were yesterday, like go all in and just run like, like 10 more fucking extra steps. If you could be 0.28% better than yesterday, you would double your results in any aspect of your life in one year. 0.28% better than yesterday, you would double your results in one fucking year. And that's all it takes. Like if you can run fucking 0.28 more seconds, like that's it. You would double your results in one year. More, make 0.28% more income than yesterday, you would double your results in one year. I don't have to think about my end year fucking goal. Just go all fucking in and a bit more. That's it. Every day. And I really wow. like it. This has been great. Yeah, dude, this has been, this has been great. We'll wrap it up soon. You know, I want to, I want to add a little, for me, it's like, if you say, Hey Brody, and I'm a fucking high energy dude, I sleep like four hours a night, like in crank, you know what I mean? And it's like, if you ask me, can you go all in for the next year? I can't tell you with complete integrity. Yes. But if you ask me, can I, you go all in today? Fucking right. I can. If you ask me again tomorrow, yeah, I can go all in today. Right. That's how you string together years with expected dates. Not saying I'm going to go all in this month. Right. Like that doesn't work. Right. Right. You know, right. So dude, okay. okay let's, uh, let, let, let's wrap this up by, why don't you, why don't you number one, give us one last nugget of Daniel G wisdom. I always like to have someone just first thing that comes to mind, rip it off and then tell us where to find you. Yeah. Then I'll just base it on this conversation. Listen to people that have the results that you fucking want. And that's it. If uncle Thank Mary you. is making $60,000 working at the fucking bank, right? She cannot go show you how to become a millionaire. So yep. stop listening to uncle Mary, Mary, if you want to become a millionaire, listen to people that have the results that you want. Stop listening to the fucking travel agent that is sending you off to Japan and saying it's the best fucking city and it's never been to Japan. Stop listening to the fucking real estate agent that says this is the best fucking investment and you're going to make loads and loads of fucking money. And then you turn to him and I'm like, bro, why aren't you, ain't the, why aren't you in the deal? Like start really listening to people that have the results that you want and have actually fucking done it. And that's it. And that takes finding a coach, finding a mentor in your field of uh, finding somebody that's actually put in the practitionership and finding a great coach. Again, somebody that's a practitioner and that's somebody that can educate really fucking well, but actually has done the results. That's it. That's my one, two. Dude, that's great. That's, that's so good. Like if people would just listen to that, that would solve the external issue problem. Yeah. That, that solve it, dude. Like, so every 99.9% of people that you're taking advice from, like really, what? if you really think about it, like you even cut out and sorry, boyfriend or girlfriend, you even cut out the spouse that's giving you wrong fucking advice. Like, and that's, and, and here's the deal. Like, it doesn't mean that you don't love that person. It's just not, she's not giving you the advice or she's not giving you the advice necessary to progress your business, progress your life in that aspect. So you're literally cutting out 99% of the bullshit in your life and the people telling you false shit. Yeah, dude. I mean, they just, like we were talking about earlier, things come full circle. They just won't get it. Like I fucking, I walked up to my grandma at Christmas cause I knew this was upset her. And I was like, grandma, I'm thinking about getting some finger tattoos. And she's like, I bet that'll make you real successful. And I was like, what the? like you taught second grade granny like shut the fuck up you know what i mean it, dude, they just don't understand ever yeah. this has been this has been such a great episode dude really really appreciate you coming on um uh, tell them tell everybody where they can find you yeah so um you guys can just go right to my instagram daniel guaranya g-u-a-r-a-g-n-a 
<laughs> Brody's looking at me like, yeah, that difficult name. Or um, you, got, you guys can go to worldclassclosers.com. I have a bunch of information on there as well. But Daniel, what I need, I post a lot of Instagram. I'm starting to do Instagram live feeds again, Monday to Thursday. So I'm just popping back up and having a conversation like you and I had today. So yeah, this has been great. Thanks. Thanks, Brody. Cool. Cool. And you know, for those of you who don't already follow me on Instagram, you can find me at Brody Kern, B-R-O-D-I-E-K-E-R-N. Thanks for listening.